According to the bubble theory, there are no parallel universes, and if we assume the existence of two universal bubbles, then they're not parallel, but alternative. And according to this theory, the universe has two chambers, like an hourglass, where the matter goes from one chamber into the other, and this happens each time with the Big Bang. And all we know is that each universe is formed from the other, and asking which universe formed first is like asking which one came first, the egg or the chicken. In order for us to begin, we must suppose that one of these Big Bangs is the starting point, so we can get to know the whole story. The entire universal energy, resulting from the Big Bang, was released at once, and later on we'll see how the Big Bang is the explosion of a great lump of quarks. And then it ruptured into massless parts, carrying energy close to zero, flush out to fill up the other universe chamber. And this is the starting point for a new time, that is launched along these strings to form a new spatial cycle to this universe. These strings vibrate and partner in a harmonic and random manner, which we may never know, to form rings and bubbles varying in types, potential and power. In the bubble theory, the universal chamber is defined by a place which has been filled with strings that resulted from a great quark's explosion, which started a new time and space cycle. These super strings are what determine the type of resulting bubbles, whether they're matter bubbles, semi-matter bubbles, or energy bubbles. All graviton, magnon, gillian, and boson bubbles reside in matter bubbles, and they give them the material characteristics. The graviton gives it mass and weight, the magnon gives it a charge, the boson conserves it from destruction, and gillian is responsible for matter evolution. The semi-matter bubbles only receive polarized magnum bubbles, which distribute semi-matter bubbles in a harmonic and random manner to form what's called the black matter, which is an inaccurate naming. As a result of its rejection to interact with photon bubbles, this invisible black matter spreads out like smoke coming out of something on fire, filling up the chamber it infiltrates. Its shape and position is conserved by the polarized magnet residing inside of it, to become a sponge-like fabric full of holes that are going to be filled with white matter, so it becomes like a mold upon which everything is orderly structured. The cosmic nebula clouds find in these holes a perfect place to form galaxies. So it flows inside it taking the shape specified for it by the mold. This is how the universe arose. The energy bubbles embody the matter bubbles, forming black and white matters, one of which forms the places on which the other conglomerates. The immature strings remain filling everything in this universe, like the ocean water, where the cosmic orbs and galaxies can swim. The string's role is transporting the energy bubbles, like photon, graviton, and magnum bubbles, which ride the waves of the strings to carry out their journey in this universe. If it weren't for these vibrating strings, the light would have never traveled, and the sun would have never attracted planets, and electricity would have never moved. When these stars die, it is due to the end of their present lifespan. Due to the occurring nuclear fissures, it runs out of gillium bubbles, which reduces the spaces between the elements of the atoms, and that causes the entire matter to shrink in size. And it transforms into what's called a white dwarf. But if it's a very big star, then the nuclear explosion will release an enormous amount of neutrons and protons that will explode all at once. And this neutron explosion is far more powerful than the nuclear one. It ejects all types of energy from the material structure. Then the conversation is no more about the electrons nor the nucleus, not even about the protons and neutrons. The materialistic structure disintegrates and all of its energy is radiated. The matter shrinks gradually 
and all that remains are upper and lower quarks which clump on each other. It doesn't radiate any type of energy, and it swipes the universe disintegrating every materialistic mass it comes across with the power of its positive and negative quarks by extracting the quarks from the matter. So the matter disintegrates regardless of its mass due to the loss of quarks which are attracted to the lump of quarks of the black hole. The black hole transforms the matter after extracting its quarks into energy that dissipates into this vast universe. What happens is the disintegration of the cosmic matter into its primary element, the quark, releasing all of its energy, and every time a galaxy or a star disintegrates, the lump of quarks gets bigger and bigger. Unfortunately, some still insist that the matter enters the hole and moves through a wormhole to come out from the other side from a white hole into a hypothetical parallel universe. Why don't they accept that after the matter has been depleted of its energy, all that's left are the upper and lower magnetic spheres cluttered to each other forming an enormous and terrifying quarks magnet. The black hole is nothing but matter that lost all of its energy bubbles after it exploded in nuclear and neutron explosions until nothing but quarks remained from it, which are attracted to each other to increase its gravitational power, pulling the quarks of any nearby matter towards it to grow, like small magnets gathering together. If we look at two black holes behave at the moment of coalescence, it seems like we're seeing two magnetic balls pulling each other. Practically the matter is disintegrated into its first building unit forming a great sphere of cosmic quarks that starts going back towards the hourglass neck, launching into the other cosmic chamber by a new great quarks explosion, in which each quark is decomposed into bubbles that launch in the form of string smoke, starting a new cosmic cycle and new time for new place. With that, our chicken just laid an egg the second chamber, to grow another chicken once again. Eternity is nothing but the continuation of these times. No one knows whether it will ever stop.